Hello, good fellows. Brass Willie here, and today we have a little pocket revolver. This is a Smith and Wesson 642. This specific model is the Pro Series 642. So there's a couple of things that make this special. Speaking of which, it is in 38 special, but being a 642 Pro Series, you've got a couple of extra features. First off, they have smoothed and polished the internals from the factory, which makes this a lot more pleasant to pull the trigger at least. We'll get to the shooting experience in a moment. It's also cut for moon clips. And if you don't know what moon clips are, well, you have no business getting one of these revolvers. But if you do know what moon clips are, that is a huge feature because uh, even though it does reload rather well with the speed loaders, uh, because the grips are fairly thin, you can get a speed loader in there mostly. Uh, the moon clips are fantastic because they all come out at once. This is a short ejector rod, so having the moon clips, they dump out and you can reload it. That said, if you need to reload your snub nose revolver, you are in a massive world of not pleasant stuff. Uh, the snub nose revolver really is a backup gun, so it's something you take to the grocery store or the gas station. You have your little sticky holster. You can Mexican carry these too, actually, if you tighten your belt up enough. But pocket carry is really what this is made for, especially with these boot grips. These are, again, part of the Pro Series. Other than that, I have done uh, some wolf springs to this, so I've adjusted the return and the hammer spring. Unlike most other Smith & Wesson revolvers, this does not have a leaf spring. It actually has a coil spring in it. So getting the triggers nice with these is a little more difficult than with the K-frames. That said, I think the trigger is pretty darn good on this. Five shots, you're done. New York Reload, pick up another revolver. Or again, don't count on this as your primary unless it's a really quick trip. Um, you do have this little grip. So they make bigger grips and I do have a fatter grip that actually covers the back strap. When I have the back strap covered with the fat grip, uh, really actually defensive loads are not a problem, especially if the grip covers here. But otherwise, because this grip is so tiny, even for my tiny hands, I have trouble getting a full grip there. You can see the pinky just kind of rests and hangs off. Because of that, it is really not the best to shoot. It's about 14 ounces. You don't have any coverage here. You have metal here. So I recommend wad cutters. Wad cutters at 148 grains out of this gun will get the job done. You, again, are stuck. Option to cock the hammer, which is a plus, this is shrouded so it doesn't get snagged on anything so you can put it in your pocket. Again, use the tool for the job. This is a deep cover pistol. Um, I, again, not such a fan with even regular power loads, but the wad cutters, they'll do the trick. They'll go right through someone uh, and they are pretty devastating. There's this big, nasty, basically like a old metal garbage can flying through the air and they just crush and tear. So other than that, um, we have gutter sights. Again, even if you had a great trigger, unlike say the Combat Masterpiece I recently showcased, which is just a little bigger, but about twice the weight, this is your sight picture. So my recommendation, something you can practice five, seven, at 10 yards, you should be able to hit the A zone with uh, instinct point shooting if you practice enough. So you'll never be unarmed, you just won't be heavily armed when you carry a Smith & Wesson J-frame. But they've been around for 60, 70 years, so there clearly is still some merit to this pistol, which is why I own one and occasionally carry one. 